Remembering your father's advice about never using the topmost rungs of a ladder, you stop just short of the ladder top. There we you go. Snare the tower top. The crowd eats it up. Who's the schmuck with the rope? <laughs> Be careful you don't put an eye out. Who's the schmuck with the Score. rope? Ah. The metal. The metal. As you reach the top of the water tower, the crowd cheers. Thank God, it's Freddy. We're number one. We're number one. <laughs> what are you going to do now, Freddy? I'm going to Sierra Land. Sierra Land? Boing. That one hit a 9.0 on the free plug -a meter Nobody wants to go to Sierra Land anymore. It's abandoned and sad. Carefully pour the purification solution into the town's water supply. Excellent job. It weren't more than a few hours before the folks of Coarse Gold was feeling a whole heck of a lot better. Their bowels were all settled down and happy. Freddy knew he could relax now. Everything was calm and peaceful. But round about midnight, that very same night, trouble struck again. Freddy was in his own bed, sound asleep, when... Been a busy day. Fire! Fire, Freddy Farkas! Please come urgently! What's what? wrong? What's wrong, Srini? You just said that. A tragedy is becoming. The assay office is aflame. She is burning with a might more severe... The pharmacy may be next alighted. Get dressed as soon as possible. I am dressed. I don't own pajamas. <laughs> Take mine. No, wait. There is not time to perform such an effort. Just hurry and scheme in such a way so as to extinguish the most threatening fire. Okay. Let's restore, get over our dead moose on the floor, which I still find hilarious that we have. Okay. Mind the store, won't you, Srini? I'm off to uphold justice and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. Oh. The old abandoned assay office is ablaze, threatening to burn down not only itself and your pharmacy, but the whole town. Okay, now we need baking soda. And then we need the swing. And you gotta click on him right when he goes by. You can see. You're not quite skillful enough to make a perfect three-point landing from the swing to the seesaw without breaking every bone in your body. Mm. In other words, try it and you'll be the man with the flopping. There we go. Did I die? So that's yep. how Freddy's brilliant career done come to a screeching halt. I died. He sank into the swamp and was never seen again. I went in the swamp. To, Cause the rest of us were kind of planning on being in the sequel. How in the world did I get all the way in the swamp?
Well, anyway, the thing is, you gotta get Mind the from the ladder, or from the swing, over to the roof. The old abandoned. So let's get everything at least ready here. You're supposed to push yourself There we go. And then I just yep. killed myself. Freddy fell down when <laughs> he laughed. It were a sad day. We found him all squished and not really living anymore. <laughs> Of course, we had our own problems to deal with all of a sudden like. That's about when the town of Course Gold ceased to exist, as we've done known it. But that's another story, boys and girls. I got to be alone <laughs> with my thoughts for a while. A crushing defeat. And what you're actually supposed to do. You teeth. Pick them back up. Score. Yep. Get up there. And then that. And there we go. That's how you do it. So we saw the deaths. What pluck. What prowess. What a ridiculous solution. Still, you thought of it. You single-handedly quenched the flames of the assay office by using the seesaw as a catapult for the baking soda. Too bad nobody was here to see it. They'll never believe you in the morning. Yeah, well, we did it. Okay, we need to go to the bar. So we will be heading that way. There's the bar. There are some postcards we need, and then we need to see Overy. The fire is out at the assay office, Sam. You can stop panicking. Okay. Oh yes, the fire at the assay office. I was all in a tizzy for a while there. Well, there's supposed to be cards here, but I don't see them. There's nothing on the table worth taking. There's nothing. This table is glued to the. F That's sap. Hmm. Now's a bad time to go for a spin. You've got responsibilities. nothing on it worth taking and you can't move it now there are supposed to be things here I don't know why I cannot get them or where they are as a matter of fact The boss is more than a little upset. Seems that our friend has been thwarting every plan so far. Ah, yep. there we Something's go. Something's gotta be done about it. Absolutely. Now, let's get down to business. What is the best way to get rid of our little problem permanently? Probably How kill him. Hang him. Oh, too quick and merciless. Poison? Nah, too unsure. Ancient Egyptian dagger. I can't find mine. 
Got one on you? Ancient Egyptian dagger. Not at the moment. It don't matter how we do it, so long as we do it soon. And we don't want no proof it was us, neither. And nothing to connect it with the boss. Excellent thought. And the boss has arranged for a bit of muscle to come in and make sure the entire town's cleaned out PDQ. We'll be rid of that do-gooder and all his flea-bitten friends in no time. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing cruelly, they sit back to reflect on their villainy. Gee, I wonder what would happen if we went down here. Am I interrupting anything? Oh, uh, 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 why, of Rats course know. not, Mr. Farkas. Uh, we were just talking about... Oof. Yeah, oof. Uh, what he means is we were simply chatting after an invigorating uh, workout. Sheriff, you know about the fire down at the assay office? Fire? No. You don't say. I probably say it. Why, if and I'm not mistaken, a fire there could wipe out most of Main Street and take your pharmacy right up along with it. Ooh, one hates the contemplate it. <laughs> uh huh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so pretty evident that uh they want us dead go there there you go now let's go get what we need from in here memory's not perfect but I do basically know what to do in the game and they're still not here well there's nothing on it worth taking and you can't move it hmm Most. Well, there is supposed to be some stuff here, I thought. Actually, I think I know what I'm doing now, and that was, I'm in the wrong place, and I haven't done something. I went and made sure. Eh, go boot. We need to go to the graveyard. Take that shovel. Score! Glancing furtively around to see if Doug's within sight, you grab his shovel. Harden our dust, but here we grow. Like, uh oh. Reboot Hill isn't very. Oh. Looks like your dear friend Philip has go. passed on. Gee, it seems like only a day or two ago you filled a prescription for him. Oh. Uh oh. We killed him. Anyway. Score. Let's it's dig up his grave. The freshly laid grave. Muscles that haven't been used in years begin to groan and whine. Oh. With the gritty determination of a professional grave robber, you toil on. And on. And on. We're good at digging graves. Woo! You carefully search through the many pockets of Graves' $3 suit until you discover the safe deposit box key you entrusted to fill oh so many years ago. We kind of need that. Score! In a touching display of emotion, and a hidden desire to carry a little less around with you, you fold up Philip's letter and place it under his folded hands. I guess this makes Phil a correspondence corpse. Oh, God, he did say that. What are you looking for? Gold filling? There we go. You grab a handful of clay from the pile beside the grave. 
Well, you never know, it could come in handy. Now you may be saying, what letter? What are you talking about? Well, if we go to one of our other saves, let's go to this one. There's technically the fiber. It doesn't matter. You received this letter a few years back from your recently dearly departed friend, Phil Graves. Dear Freddy. There we go. Thank you so very kindly for your gracious hospitality during my recent convalescence. The floor of your workroom proved a comfortable bed, and the stale pharmacy goods you fed me staved off starvation quite adequately. <laughs> I must admit to being a little curious of your request that I retain your safety deposit key for you. I cannot imagine what you've secured in that bank vault that could create such strong feelings of both revulsion and endearment. However, I have done as you asked and taken your key with me. I vow to you I will never return this key to you, nor even allow it within your sight. I further swear to keep it with me wherever I go. On this, you have my word of honor, for I am ever your friend, Philip D. Graves. And that is why you know how to do it. Bluff Street is just a little too Okay, let's get moving. We need those postcards. Okay, and head back down this way. And all the way down again. Ye old ore house. George Armstrong cus Custer slept here repeatedly. So we're at the whorehouse. There they you are. snatch the French postcards. What is that? It's Olga. For those who don't want to spend another sheepless night. But um, -tsh. why? It's a lovely painting of Fred and Ginger. You know, Fred Mertz and Ginger Grant, that hot new minstrel team. It's the lovely and winsome Chastity, a girl who really knows her stuff. In fact, every man in town knows her stuff. Ooh. Howdy, Chastity. Howdy to you, you big old sloppy hunk of manly macho woman loving man. <laughs> okay. Laying it on a little thick tonight, aren't we? Yeah, business is slow, but I gotta keep in practice. Evening, Purity. Purity. Evening, Freddy, darling. Your mouth's not moving. If Madam still got you under lock and key, or you wanna let us get a hold of you one of these days, big boy? She's got me under lock and key. I'm afraid I'm all hers. For the time being. Nope. Oh. Ooh. Well, if you ever change your mind, honey, you know where to find us. Mm -mm. And when, and how often, and for how much. Ba ha 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 ha. <laughs> Translation. How much do you charge anyway? <laughs> Translation. Oh. I'm sheep at twice the price. Ba uh. ba 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 ba. Translation. Sounds like a deal. <laughs> Translation. Yes. I cost next to mutton. Ugh. Howdy, Miss Virtue. You sure are a vision of loveliness. Thank you ever so much, Freddy. And you, sir, are a study and buff. What does that mean? Just that you're the manliest prescription filling man I did ever see. Oh, thank you.
Anything back here? Nope. We'll go up. Now, at this point, we need we gotta wait on her to show up. You won't need any plush red velvet chairs in your quest for truth. <laughs> Touched her. Translation. Say, you're a good-looking human with a gentle touch. Uh. Bah, bah, ha, ha. Kind of grossed out. Hope you mean it. Hope you. All right, here we go. Hey, Mona Moore. It's about time you showed up. Ready to take my pharmacy bill out in trade? Sure. Then get over here before I have to come get you, little pumpkin. Ugh. Madam Overy, no. Please don't let me be the bottom. Because it's going to hurt. <laughs> I think you should leave. Why, Sadie? Just because I'm using you for cheap, tawdry pleasure when my heart belongs to Penelope Prim, the gorgeous, young, obviously more virtuous, new town school mom? What? Who? Oh, <laughs> nothing. Never mind. What were you saying? Oh, I have balls I for chins. Saying, I think you should leave. Leave town, that is. Walls. Oh, it's so tragic. Oh, Friday, there's just no easy way to say this. The girls say the sheriff and the banker are talking their sleep. They hate you, Freddy. They want you dead. They're out to get you. Something about you foiling the plan and how they had to get you out of the way. You have to run, Freddy. You have to get out of town by sundown. Now, don't you worry, Sadie. I've been doing a pretty good job up till now. Using just my wits and my pharmacological knowledge, haven't I? I'm not gonna just turn tail and run and leave you and Penelope and Coarse Gold behind me to fend for yourselves. You're not listening to me, Freddy Farkas. There's man a common. Man with guns. Big guns. Guns with long barrels. Long hard barrels. Long hard steely barrels. <laughs> and low okay. slung holsters and and <gasps> a she uh, Oh sorry. Yikes. Sadie, snap out of it. Oh, sorry. I was just visualizing. You were doing and something. You'll never be able to outthink men with guns. If you're set on staying in town, you'll have to, you know, go back to your own ways. That's out of the question. I left gunslinging behind me years ago. I'm not like that anymore. And I don't want to discuss it. Stop it. You gotta choose, and that's all there is to it, hon. Either leave town and save your hide, or pull yourself together and face reality. Quit talking about potions and liniments. They're not gonna stop no bullets. It's time to get off of your cute little butt and give these men a taste of frontier justice. Now, what are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. Hold me, Sadie. Press me to your ample bosom, and let me decide tomorrow. My you ample bosom. Now, let's see, where was I? Oh, that's right. Madam Overy begged and pleaded with Freddy to either leave town or take up his old gunslinging ways. Something which Freddy was just a mad reluctant to consider. So they decided to sleep on it. And though they didn't get much sleep, Freddy did mull it over somewhat. The next morning, he decided to... Wait, maybe I better... Mm. <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> just go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Penelope. Coarse gold. Madam Overy. I know I've got to get out of this town before they gun me down, but I can't. Coarse gold's my home, and darn it to heck, I'm not gonna let some cheap criminals run me out of my home. Sadie's right. I've got to be the man I once was. I've got to dredge up my ugly past, meet it square in the face, stare it down, pick it up, dust it off, fluff it up, and put it on again. <coughs> <laughs> okay. This ours. This is the key to your safe deposit. Hey, this looks j the door key. That just does. That sounds just like Whisper Glory. Okay, we need that. Take that with us. You take your old gunslinger clothes and your good guy model Stetson hat. Good guy model, by the way. And go ahead and take our claim check. Score! You pick up the claim check. Your hand trembling with the memory of the last time you wore the boots that you trade. Oops. Anyway, he talks about how we get our ear blown off again. Now, one more thing I'm going to do before I start the chapter, which we will. So we'll talk. Don't shout at Srini from behind the count. <laughs> you can't think of anything to say to that. Srini. Let's go practice my target shooting. That is a good leisure time activity for us to do, yes, all right. But how are we even to begin without such that until you locate some sort of shooting mechanism? Hey, I we must don't, wonder. We don't have a gun right now. Oh, details, details. <laughs> Which kind of tells you what we need to be doing in this chapter. Find the store, won't you spoke it? Oh boy, there's shit in the ground. Ruby. Come on. There we go. It's like pixel perfect. We need some wax from the church. This the candles in shit. Score. You would never dream of stealing a candle from a church, but they wouldn't miss one of those puddles of candle wax. Nope, they won't. And next time we will start Act Three: Guns and Neuroses. This has been SaxCat20, and as always, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist. Stay tuned for the next part.